Now we're talking numbers and we'll use the latest poll that was released by Ipsos and this was Tuesday of last week on uh, it was touched on economy it even touched on uh, the possible you know presidential uh, results in case uh, or outcome in case a vote were to be carried out today but what dominated or at least the carry the take home I should say was on the numbers with the president's uh, elections if it was to take place today. Jane Gray did a story and we'll use this just as a sample of what uh, was uh, taken uh, by most of the media houses, the attention that it was given. The latest test on the country's political waters conducted by research firm Ipsos indicates that Kenyans are not happy with the general direction the country is taking. That disapproval cuts across the board in terms of political affiliations with both Jubilee and NASA supporters seemingly agreed that the country is headed in the wrong direction. 71% of Kenyans interviewed by Ipsos say that Kenya is headed in the wrong direction. NASA support Voters paint even a gloomy picture as 91% of them think the country is headed in the wrong direction, while 52% of Jubilee supporters also say all is not well in Kenya. For a government that's been in place at the national level for more than four years, to have only one third of your supporters saying it's going in the right direction might be the cause, a cause for concern. Kenyans are also evenly divided on the performance of the president in the past three months. 46% approve his performance, while 49% of those interviewed disapprove his performance. Yet, despite this, the poll indicates that if Kenyans were to go to the poll today, 47% will vote for President Uhuru Kenyatta, against 42% who will vote for NASA leader Raila Odinga. 8% are undecided and 1% say they will not vote. Compared to another study released by Ipsos in January, NASA leaders Ray Laudinga and Kalonzo Musioka have gained numbers over Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto of the Jubilee Party. Of interest, though, is the level of public confidence in various candidates. President Uhuru Kenyatta leads with 40%, Ray Laudinga 25%, William Ruto second at 31%, and Kalonzo Musioka, 12%. But if you consider the question of which candidate enjoys the least public confidence, Kalonzo Musioka leads with 39%. There were 2,026 completed interviews with a contact number of 5,484 done in 46 counties. The study also had a margin error of plus or negative 2.18 with a 95% confidence level. Jane Goiri, NTV. As that story aired, uh, Tom was shaking his head, jotted something. Uh, was your problem with that particular report? Well, it wasn't. That Don't be good. diplomatic. Just say it as it is. That's, that's the whole point of this show. In the, the, it's true, when the question is put to respondents, if the election were held today or tomorrow, whom would you vote for? But the problem, the general problem with the media, and it's not just in Kenya, is um, this tendency, or maybe almost a kind of, um, how to describe it, an impulse to be more assertive or more assured uh, without paying enough attention to the context. Um, for example, in that same uh, release, uh, it was shown that we asked people whether they were registered or not. Yeah. And 94% said that they were. Now we know from comparing even the preliminary uh, IABC figures with the national population statistics that that's inflated by about 15%. Um, even in 2003, uh, eight months after the 2002 election in the Afrobarometer, 81% uh, claimed that they had been registered at the time of that election. And of those who claimed that they were registered, 91% of them, 92% said they had voted when the, when the official ECK turnout, about which there was no petition court case or argument, it was only around 60%. So Kenyans like to look as if they're good citizens. Um, now, unlike in the past where we had voters cards with this new technology, we don't have that. So our interviewers, when they select somebody in a household and we're going to ask questions, 
about whether they're registered or not um, can't say, well, prove it to me by showing your card, however politely. Okay. And the, the, the reason that's very important is we also put a slide. Of the 6% who confessed they were not registered, mm -hmm. and we know that's undercounted, when we asked, well, if you, if you could vote, who would you vote for? Uh, in contrast to this lead that the incumbent president has over Ryla 47 to 42, among all respondents, uh, Ryla leads 48 to 39 percent among those who are not registered. Now that suggests that a certain part of this election was already won or lost at the voter registration stage. I think I think Guy wanted to interject. Yeah, I was just finished by saying yeah, how to I'll get the reporters number, huh? to back off a little bit from you know who would win and so on, but pay a little more attention to some of the other results to show how shaky or how tentative that advantage uh, of, of five percent the president actually has. Okay, No, I, I was just unclear about that number because if I, if I recall correctly, when you when you when you just when you just uh, put, put uh, assess the people who are who are registered voters. Mm -hmm. Then Uhuru's... Uh, he went up by 1% to 48. The number goes up by 1%. 1%, that's right. I, I'm not clear about the other one who said Raila leads. That's right. I, I, I never saw that one. Was it in the... Yeah. It was, was, in, the, the, it was the in the presentation that we sent out to everybody. Which page I could just make among, reference here? Uh -huh. Yeah. Which page I can make reference here? Uh, the slide is slide number 44. Uh, number sorry. Four. Yeah. 44. Right. But, we'll but, get to that yeah, just But, but while, while we get to that, I, yes. I find it uh, quite odd that... Um, Tom and, and, well, and Ipsos and everybody else goes to great lengths to do these surveys and to come out with these uh, beautiful presentations and call a big press conference. And yet he's trying here trying to dampen down expectations. Right. And even in the, 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 the write-up that comes <laughs> with it, they are more or less saying, don't take this thing too seriously. Relax, you know, don't take it too seriously. Then why, then why, then why give it to us? No, I think uh, the point is, uh -huh. um, let's take it very seriously <laughs> in the sense that uh, countering mm -hmm. some uh, predictions or expectations that once NASA would name their candidate of the three principles or five, however you want to count them, uh, much of that support would, would vanish, would dissipate. Um, we've seen the opposite. Uh, the naysayers have been proved wrong that not only from the January poll, when we didn't know who their candidate was. That all the votes in the opinion vote basket of Kalonzo Musioka, Musalia Mudavadi, about half a percent for Moses Watangala, Raila accumulated all of that. And that's why he went up from 30% to 42%. Okay. So we had, interestingly, um, from the opposition, who had been making all kinds of accusations against Ipsos and me personally, that I've been paid <laughs> off ten million by Uhuru and so on. Have you? <laughs> Just I to be on, on the record. I went, went into you a Kenya commercial <laughs> bank account, and unfortunately, I don't have an account. There, so I'll have to tell the president to send it to where my account actually is. Um, uh, there has been, you know, basic silence. So one thing that I didn't see in the media was any serious analysis comparing the reaction of the political class from the last couple of surveys mm -hmm. and this one. Okay. I uh, didn't I see microphones. Some, 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 of, some of us gave it a mention, and, and, and I think... Uh, You're not a presidential candidate or a... Oh, from the candidates. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they were all, yes, they were all, they were all silent, yes. Well, well, very <laughs> silent, very right. silent. I mean, there were a few comments in the last days over the weekends where some Jubilee people were dismissing it and saying Jubilee is actually way over 50. And of course, on the other side, the same, but far, far more muted. I mean, we had statements from the ODM acting secretary general, Senator Zani, I mean, you know, absolutely trashing us last year and me and Oburu Odinga called for my deportation and so on. And that we must have been. And Colonzo saying if he's elected president, he's going to, ban you know, polls. ban polls and so on. So that all <laughs> went quiet now. We're in an area of kind of consternation and uncertainty in both sides. And I think it raises the question, the, the kind of political science question is if 90% of the Kenyan electorate, whether these people are registered or not, but most of them, you know, are have made up their minds. What is going to be the cost per vote between now and the remaining 62 days right. of winning over any of these other people who are undecided or who, of who they're going to vote for or whether they're going to vote for it all? It's, okay. If you take all the money that's going to be spent in the next two months and divide it by the number of people whose votes or minds might change, it's going to be maybe more expensive than the railway line. Let me, let me, uh, uh, yeah. uh, if I may. Um, uh, uh, 
uh, and I think you, you should just explain this. There is, um, uh, when you say um, uh, Raila v. Kenyatta is 47, 42, with a margin of error of 2.8 means... 2.18, 2.2. Or 2.2 yeah. means, I mean, it could actually be much, much closer. A bit closer. Uh, the president think, could be at 45, Raila right. could be at 44 yeah, precisely. within and, that and, group. Right. But, sorry. And, and my point, I mean, the point yeah. I'm driving is, is I'm really supporting what, what, what you're saying is that when the media takes these figures almost as if they're definitive, you know, uh, uh, and stuff, it's not really dampening them down to recognize that they might be telling you something else rather than there might just be an indication the to something. Let, and, just and, 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 and there's one other thing um, uh, that, that I will mention about the poll. I mean, what I found interesting is the figures that um, of the people who think the country is going in the wrong direction, but who still think the president is doing a good job, you know. Which I and find, are willing to vote for him. You know, yeah, and I find that quite interesting because then why are they voting? Interesting, well, that consistent. One can, you know, why are they that, that one we can come to in a minute, but I just yeah. wanted to add the before. most important uh, um, sort of caveat that I gave at our release and is also in the write up is the fact that the distribution of our sample of the 2,026 people over the Kenyan landscape for this survey was based on population data. What we have to do as soon as the verification of the voter registration is completed is to not only use that for distributing the next sample, but to actually rerun these numbers because there have been claims, but let's get the actual verdict and see who benefited most from the voter registration drive, right. and that would give these numbers a bit more of realism. Sabina, so, you, you I want to give you, uh, okay, one, first and foremost, I want to appreciate the work that they have done. And I think um, I've also- Oh, this is different, appreciation of your yeah. work. <laughs> Will you be my best friend? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, one thing is that he also went through some opinion polls, and what we got at our nomination was not very far from all the opinion polls I've said. I've heard the So rumors. we cannot dismiss it. <laughs> Secondly, um, I think as he looked at the margin that it can be closer, I'm also looking at the margin that it can also be a part where we right. can be at 49, mm -hmm. at Jubilee at 49, when I say we, and then the others can be at 40. Mm -hmm. And again, appreciating that then uh, from 32, and I think that's why they are silent, or where people are silent, from 32 to 40, from 30 to, from 32. 30 to 42, yeah. it's addition of what was initially Mudavadis and uh, Kalonzos and everything now as that's we put right. together. That's why Riley is looking to be much more now. Mm -hmm. um, viable, yeah. Viable than it were before. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, finally, I, I, I really am happy tonight that you, you have said something very interesting to me, that if you were to look at the number of people who are registered, already Jubilee has won with the number of people who have registered. Uh, they have an advantage. I didn't say they're over 50%, but they have an advantage. advantage. Again, I'm looking at the time that this sample was taken in. You know, we had the difficult moment of, of because of um, the Unga story, and so the level of dissatisfaction was higher than now that the UNGA has come. The level of dis dissatisfaction was higher. I, I would like to see after the SGR launch whether there is something positive coming and confidence. And I also want to answer him. He asked how many people are not satisfied with the direction the country is taking, but, but they are still, still voting. Vote. Because they are optimistic and they can see we are heading <laughs> to the right direction. And they know, they know, they, they, they know given time. Right. Given time, you know, when you give, uh, when you're doing the, the foundation, even when you're building yeah. a house, and let me keep on using these examples, and again, tell me, I know you're going to tell me Kenya is not a house that you're building. When you're at the foundation level, nobody sees the beauty of the house. But when now the house comes up and you start roofing, you start the decoration, then you can appreciate the beauty. And I think this is where we are. Um, the Jubilee uh, government is at the foundation still. This nation uh, a good I, foundation. I doubt anybody would oh, yes. look at the foundation oh. and think that uh, the, the, the house government. is going in the wrong way. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic that Jubilee can be given an, an, an extra time. But actually, that, 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 that's why. That is spin. These are people who think I the think country is going in the you. wrong way. Yes, right. but that's and why they're they all I, I think there's a legitimate that question here. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, she's a very good spokesperson for uh, Jubilee. <laughs> Congratulate her. <laughs> but I think that, that number of people who are dissatisfied yet will, st will still vote mm -hmm. for the incumbent. I think that is a reflection again of our, um, I would call it our primitive uh, politics, where you will vote for a person because he's from your tribe, even if he's messing you up. Mm -hmm. As simple as that. No, I, actually, I didn't hear any tribe. You know, let's not no, tribe everywhere. I didn't, what I, I didn't am saying hear is this. Uh, if, any tribe no, in the numbers. Yes. I, I, with any data oh. like this, you would expect that if people are, are dissatisfied, they will be looking to change. 
but they are not looking to change. They want to retain the status quo even when they are dissatisfied. Right. Tommy, you want us to, to, to make reference? What slide, like what slide is that? I would like because I don't know the confidence. Because what slide is that? The confidence well, number is well, so that was very interesting. Let's, let's come to that just in one second. What slide is that? I, I must, uh, sorry with Tom, all. Tom, just what slide yes, is that so that I can show that people? On the, that oh, slide number is 49. 49. That uh, a third of those who think the country is going in the wrong direction said they would vote for the current uh, president and his deputy. And I, without any offense to the nation, I have to express my thanks to the star because um, I was invited, of course I was invited by you to come on air that night, yes. Mark, but the star also invited me to write a column in the paper to address this issue. Is this uh, the one? Specifically, right. yes. Um, and you can see in the red on the far left that one third, is that slide 44? This section on page 48? You said 40, 49? It's 49 is the slide. Right, wrong direction. Yeah. Have you got it? What's the page on it? 49. Presidential vote choice by those who feel Kenya is headed in the right stroke or wrong direction. those who approve, disapprove of the president. No, this is the next one. The next you one. You go down one. Um, and sure, in that column, yeah. I was able to address this issue. Mm -hmm. And just to summarize the 450 words, a view about the country's direction is an opinion. But um, as many people found out bitterly on the Democratic side in the last American election, a presidential election or any election is about a choice. You're in a, in a restaurant, you've got a menu. You've got to choose what you're going to eat. Right. So just because people feel the country's not going in the right direction doesn't necessarily mean they're going to vote for the alternative right. to the incumbent mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. They're going to measure the positives and, as we say, the negatives on both sides, however they do that, right. whether it's performance, whether it's identity, whether it's their friends, whether it's criminal case, you know, whatever it is, this is a concrete choice. So you're going to look at the alternatives. And I think one of the striking things about this election so far, it may change, and that is, even compared to the last one, of the other six presidential candidates, what is the total percentage of the vote that they're going to get? Last time, it was around four, four and a half percent. It was a bit Almost higher. Almost enough to push that election into a runoff. Mm -hmm. Until we do our next poll, or any other company goes out and does it, and find out how much are they attracting, whether a protest vote, or building somebody in the future, or an identity vote, whatever it is, because my guess is, and I'm only guessing here, unless in total these other six candidates can get, again, at least four or five percent, there won't be a runoff. So, I mean, uh, you're, f from what you've explained, in essence, because what you're saying is, um, uh, on the many that people have, in essence, you're saying things are going badly, but the alternative isn't necessarily a better deal. But again, this is a media <laughs> challenge. You people in the media, the, 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 I mean, you people in the media, don't trust us. Go out and interview people. There's no alternative. Do your own. Yeah, no, I'm saying that's what they're doing. And the alternative has nothing to offer. Go to Quartagocho, or go to Colorado, or go to Lavington, or go to a couple of, I mean, in Gong Town, and interview 40 or 50 people. You don't need a huge budget to do that. And interrogate these numbers. Right. Right. Don't just sit here in your studio, Mark, yes. and then show off our stuff as uh, flattering as it is. But you, well, know, you claim to be the, the lead in this no, particular no, research no, no, uh, no, no. field. Don't be <laughs> no, Go out and do it and verify, even if it's superficial. Yeah, but, 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 but I'm interested but, because but I, want, I, want, I want him to see uh, the level of confidence because that's, that's my interest. Well, sorry, I have to criticize Jane if, a little bit there, about the because the way that was presented in the clip yes. was 40% have confidence in Huru Kenyatta yes. and only 25% uh, in Raila Odinga. And yet it was very clear in the slide that this was a, a four-option question mm -hmm. of a lot of confidence, some confidence, only a little, and none. Mm -hmm. So perhaps probably to avoid the temptation to just focus on the top line, mm -hmm. we should have combined the a lot and some on one side, on the positive side, and only a little and none on the negative side, mm -hmm. so that people, and then it's a bit even, more even, this, it's not um, quite just, so. Just, just one question, these this yeah. kind of questions out, out in the field, uh, yes. especially taking that our people are not very well, uh, very sophisticated, is it difficult to ask these questions? And is it is easy for the, the respondents to understand the question? as opposed to a straight question is who will you vote for? When you talk about confidence and levels of confidence, are the people going to be really clear what they're answering from your experience? 
Um, I wouldn't be able to say unless we did a scientific experiment or unless mm. every time somebody answers a question like well, that, yeah, to, say, to, to yeah. ask them, uh -huh. um, what's the main reason you say so? Uh -huh. Now, we've added that question uh, where we didn't use to ask it. We didn't use to ask it about the president's approval, mm -hmm. but now we do. Why do you say so if you support or you approve or disapprove? We didn't use to ask it about Kenya's direction, and now we do. We didn't use to ask it about what political party you support. So I'll have to hire you as a, as a consultant, so you draft the question, and Great. the next time we ask this, we'll dig down a little bit deeper and ask people exactly why they're saying that. <laughs> and Kipled Kip Ting uh, asks, why should polls ask questions that Kenya is heading uh, to the wrong direction? And polls don't always give the real election results. Donald Trump, despite polls indicating Hillary was popular. That's he gives not true. Hillary exam. won yeah. 3 million more votes than Trump did. The polls predicted she'd win with 3%. She, she won the whole total vote with 2.7 within the margin of error. I mean, there were a few state-level polls, including my state in Michigan, that were too few. And they're, they're, the sample that was captured through mobile phone Polling, I mean, it was much less precise. What was the important? Yeah. We're doing house, so let's not. Back uh, here, throw what the was the whole yeah? Back here, what was the importance? Out. As I introduce what you're about to, uh, yeah, you know, release tomorrow in a few hours. What was the importance about the uh, Kenya heading in the wrong direction in, in correlation to the possible election well, pattern? Well, that's 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 a good question. Um, what's the value in that question? And I think, um, first of all, I have to confess, most people or many people might know. This is a question that has been asked in the American Political Science award-winning Afrobarometer survey since 2003. And I got baptized into this business in 2003, doing the first one in Kenya. I had no okay, training okay. in national survey work before. So we just, and we're free to go to the Afrobarometer website yes. and poach any questions of theirs and run them uh, you know, anywhere in the world. Yes. And we think that's important because, uh, if I can put it simply, to just to give a choice, as I said earlier, between two um, sort of physical options, mm -hmm. two tangible options. You're going to vote for this one or that one. I think for a government, either and an opposition, moving up to an election, and maybe even more importantly, after winning or losing, whether you're in the opposition or in government, mm -hmm. you need to know what people are thinking, um, not just who they're going to vote for. I'll just give you one quick example. 1974 in Ethiopia, of course, there were no polls. The Emperor Haile Selassie did not know that tens of thousands of starving peasants were marching on the capital, which led to the Derg overthrowing his government, because not only were they not doing polls, but even the circle of close advisors around the Emperor were too afraid, too embarrassed to tell him, Your Majesty, there's a crisis out there. Right. So we think that some of these contextual problems, and not just asking if you think the country is going in the right or wrong direction, but then, as I said, going a bit deeper and asking why, helps all of us, including okay. people in office, those aspiring to office and ordinary citizens to, I think, more thoughtfully um, and with greater confidence exercise the rights that the Constitution also, gives them. Right. I'm trying uh, to and, we, and we need to close now. No, I'll give our I'm, last comments. I'm just trying to look at the human nature. If you ask me whether the country is moving into the wrong direction, you've already prompted me to think in that direction. No, what, the question is neutral. Ask, it would say, thinking about Kenya's direction, which of you th do you agree with? It's going the right direction or the wrong direction? So we give them both at the same time. Okay. And they pick well, the one they yeah, want. Yeah, but the, the, my, my, my thing is, um, just from what you said, I think there is, um, uh, for us, from the, the results that you guys presented, um, a deeper question about whether our political system is fit for purpose. So if, for example, is? people... Is? fit it's for fit. purpose. Um, if people think, um, uh, as a survey shows, uh, um, uh, it might be going in the wrong direction, but the only choices I have are not necessarily a better choice. Um, and then secondly, if, as, as in one of your slides, uh, uh, people don't even think that the party is actually governed in their own interest. Only uh, have to. You know, yeah, that, you know, uh, even those who support think, one of the parties. Uh, exactly. So people are voting for parties that they don't think are necessarily interested in their own welfare. That just proves so it. that then le should, should make us think, the okay. political system that we have crafted, you know, is it working in our interests? And if we don't think it is, mm -hmm. you know, what should we be doing about changing it? All right. You know, so that it becomes more fit for purpose and more deals with our issues as opposed to issues for politicians. Okay. I just wanted, and in the write-up, I pointed out, not trying to uh, uh, fight any battles on behalf of the government, but I made it very clear that throughout the world where this question is asked, in Africa and elsewhere, what comes, and we've seen it from the answers that people give when we ask, why do you feel it's going in the right or wrong direction? There are many things about a country's direction as perceived by members of the public That's right. that have nothing to do with government. 
I mean, we've got global prices for petroleum projects that we depend on still. We've got weather conditions. The government can try and bring uh, remedial measures when there's a drought. But the government is not responsible for earthquakes and droughts and famines and the army worm and all the rest of it. Uh, trading conditions, the collapse of the market in South Sudan. for some measures to mitigate. Yes, yeah. I mean, you're reacting with limited amount. That's what politics is about. People saying, we can deal with these problems. But we can't blame or give credit to government for all of the views that people have about the country's direction. Okay, and I, 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 and, I, I, and I agree with him. Not, but let me, but, let me but, give... Just, just one thing, just to say that the government is responsible for famine. Yes. Not, not, not drought, <laughs> not drought famine. but famine. Yeah. And by the way, in the, results, in the results that we're releasing today, tonight, that yes. you've seen, and it's right when here. we ask people who said that the most serious problem in their locality is drought, stroke, famine, unlike last time, we asked, have you seen anything done to address that famine? And only 48% said that they've seen any steps to deal with it. Okay. Now that's serious. Uh, and I need to get us concluding, and I'll start with Sabina, in, in this particular context of uh, the polls, looking forward to the next few weeks, you'll expect many. Uh, you last word to, I mean, a representative of one of the pollsters. Um, well, I think um, when you're an incumbent... And the media as well. And the issue of incumbency, of course, um, you get more critics coming sure. in. And so I'm very proud that 71%, um, if I add the confidence level of... Uh, uh, the president and, and, and his deputies coming to 71% of Kenyans have confidence with them uh, vis-a-vis a 38 percent so I'm very happy tonight and all I would like to say is that the Jubilee government has been okay. yeah yes so the Jubilee government I has don't know where she's come, <laughs> which lies number is that I was, I was, the, the confidence level, the one that was presented, there was well, taking notes. The deputy and the yes, and the president, and I also I added Alonso. Alonso, which is based twenty five and thirty, which, right. which is thirty eight. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's okay, and and so um, the only thing I'll say is that the Jubilee government has been in office working for four years. And the opposition has been there out there making noise for four years. Right now, I think before this opinion poll was done, the Jubilee government had not started now the campaign, going to the people and going to the ground. And that is why maybe a lot of people didn't know what the government was doing. <laughs> right now, the president and the deputy and the whole Jubilee team is on the ground, explain to the people, this is what we have been doing for four years. And I'm very optimistic mm -hmm. that come next um, opinion poll, not maybe the one that is coming out tomorrow, but in two weeks or three weeks' time, in a month's time, we might be at 52. Have you got your checkbook here so you can write it? <laughs> 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 All right, Patrick, is there? And then... um, uh, I, I think uh, uh, um, the, for me the polls um, should really get us thinking about um, whether our uh, system functions for us. And I think that even uh, given what uh, uh, Thomas said about earthquakes and stuff, a lot of people will be thinking, I mean, uh, and, and I'm one of them, that government's role is to be able to mitigate, to either help prevent um, uh, disasters before they happen or to do something about them after they do. And I think that when people think that these things, that we are, we are going the wrong direction, there's actually a sense in which our government and uh, I say government just, uh, I mean, now it is Jubilee to be the same if it was NASA. You know, I don't think there's a big difference between these two. Nothing. You know, um, uh, I don't think any of them essentially represent that our interests. And day. we need to think for, uh, I mean, as Kenyans, to think about our own interests. Uh, we don't just participate in this charade uh, of voting where we apportion jobs to these guys and we think that by doing that we benefit. Yes. We don't, they do. We, we, we don't necessarily benefit. Okay. And I think we really need to then start asking, what, how should we behave? How should we change this so that the system works for us and not just for them? Okay, Tom, as you conclude, this report that you're releasing, in fact, I think this is, we're the first to be able to show these numbers. I'll just skim through, though. Uh, it will be out, of course, to the press and available tomorrow. What is it trying to, you know, capture? Well, we were going to try and move away from the excitement of the so-called horse race and include more of the findings from the same survey about uh, Kenyans' perceptions of their well-being or otherwise, looking at their most serious problems at the local level and at the national level, um, what steps that they thought could be put in place to address some of these problems. As I mentioned to Machari a moment ago, for people who had identified hunger and drought, 
um, 22% who said that was the most serious problem in their locality, actually down from 41% yes. in January at the local level, uh, as inflation has really taken over there, that only half of them have seen any remedial measures taken. So there's, it's basically um, setting a kind of economic context. Okay. And I know there's often a complaint um, made, maybe incessant uh, in the media and on the street, that too much of Kenyan politics is about identity, ethnicity, and so on, block voting. So we want to, not that we're going to impose any of our values on Kenyan voters or, or, or analysts, or commentators, but say there are issues out there, and if you do a survey that focuses on the issues, you're going to pick them up. I just wanted to end with one slight uh, a question or an issue that uh, Honorable uh, Sabina raised um, about the opposition being making noise while the government has been governing. Well, one of the uh, puzzles or questions I have, as far as I know, the opposition has been in control of nearly half the counties for the last four years. And all of our polling data and of other firms have shown um, very strong support for devolution. I mean, around two-thirds to three-quarters of Kenyans support it. So my question from maybe a political uh, campaign point of view, strategy as well as polling, is why has devolution not been, uh, if I can use the word, milked more as an opportunity where the opposition can show in the counties that we have been controlling, this is where we've outperformed right. counties that have been controlled by this, you know, terrible, awful, corrupt, whatever, jubilee. And I haven't heard much of those lines. And I think more polling as more as qualitative investigation might be able to identify some opportunities on both sides okay. to take advantage of the rather strong support yes. that Kenyans of all ethnic groups and all political persuasions have for this aspect of the Constitution. She totally agrees with your question, and as, as you conclude. What, what, what troubles me is that this, these polls reveal that Kenyans don't vote on issues. They are able to identify their problems. Whether it is a villager in Muranga or a villager in Kisumu, the problems are the same, inflation and cost of living and food and, and, and all these things. Yet when it comes, you know, they will all agree. Absolutely. They all have the same problems. No difference. Mm -hmm. The difference is 1%, 2%, That's 3%. Right. Not even the, 3. Yeah. Wherever you are in the country, everybody has the same problems. Yet when it comes to political choices, completely opposite. Okay. And, and that tells you something. Yeah. They, they are not voting on the issues that confront them. They are simply ingrained that we are Jubilee. Maybe they don't have the right choices. Oh, yeah. Maybe you need oh, yeah. to run. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter who you vote for, in a sense, yeah. because that system is not set up to actually fix your problems. Okay. And we have seen it at work the last 50 years. It does very well for politicians. They are the richest people we know. You oh, know, it does so. very badly, you know, for the common man. Yeah, <laughs> oh, who keeps all right, up. all right. <laughs> lady, lady and gentlemen, thank you very much. <laughs> this, this is something that we'll definitely be talking more about. Uh, and I was hoping that, uh, Masharia, just in, in a few seconds, the policies that we have as Nation Media Group in the samples that we can use, uh, what, what rules are we, are we guided? Um, I, I think we've, we have become very cautious about uh, political polls. Uh, a bit yeah, um, yeah, yeah, no. We, first of all, we always want to know to know um, who is paying for them, uh, yes. so to speak. And I think as we go along, nation will be commissioning its own polls. But again, there'll be a commissioning from the same pool of pollsters because I think there are only a very few uh, credible pollsters uh, uh, in, in Kenya. And you know, the, the thing I find very odd is that if we want to be credible then we cannot commission one pollster. We have to commission two or three so that we can, so that they can balance each You other. did that in 2007. Yeah, we've always That's done that. Because did. if you take one, because even the questions are asked about their ownership, their structure, right. their manager. Advice. So that's, that's for us, that's a way of... Um, safeguarding. Is there a number so cut out? Safe, like 1,500? In terms of? For sample, for sample size, the ones we use? No, I think, I think those, are, those, are now, those are now already almost universally okay. um, established. The sample size, Anything between fifteen hundred and three thousand. And three thousand. The if more it's important, national, the, the, you can't that's break national. it down. Now, yeah. The more important thing is the sampling, where you sample. Okay. And that is why we try to make sure that they are doing it on a representative uh, uh, basis. That whatever okay. the sample in terms of the regions and sub-regions 
is representative of those um, and Tom is really pointing at his to show that he's keeping to the rules. Knowledge. And uh, we'll, we'll end with this, but, yes. But there's something I want to raise uh, with, with uh, Masharia. Mm -hmm. I think we also, as we look at the opinion polls and everything and what is the, on the headline, we also need to check on the cartoons. Well, there was one, <laughs> yes. There was one cartoon on Madaraka Day. I'm not very sure which uh, newspaper was. Well, yes. And we also need to know who's paying them. Because uh, it is very they sad, and it was sad for me we on Madaraka Day. The, uh, the cartoonists are paid by the media house. Yeah, but we need to know the influence because yeah. uh, as we look at the, the headlines, influence. there was there was that cartoon uh, which, on Madaraka Day. One? Which, which paper? Um, I'll show them this uh, one. I'll it's, show them this one. Don't worry. It's not this one. There was the one. <laughs> <laughs> this is very bad. He's, <laughs> show, he's showing. Yeah, yeah, this is. Uh, <laughs> uh, Diane, if you could just take this one. There were sharks. There were sharks. You know, and I want. I want. I just. The, the, the one with the sharks and that. one jiggle. I loved, I loved that I one. didn't like it because there was, the sharks had all the corruption, all bad things, mm -hmm. and Wanjiko seemed, um, you know, helpless. Do you want to tell me that as we celebrated Madaraka, there was nothing, no single issue, no, you know, sign of hope I in think, Kenya? I think, I think, it's I only think, defeated. <laughs> well, let me, to be fair, let me just give the cartoonists. I'm not a cartoonist, but I think, I think, I think they're trying to give an idea of, 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 the, of, of the national situation. It's not. Really, really short. Sure really short. Sure really short. Sure really short. Sure no, the cartoon. It's not the way it was. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, really short. Sure. You can be able to express yourself. I, I make two quick points. Number despite, one, despite, um, uh, despite the, the cartoon is a work Look. of opinion. Okay, the you second know, point. It is a cartoonist's opinion, and it's not the newspaper's opinion. All right. It's not the newspaper to tell the but cartoonist the newspaper what he will draw. You know, in the same way, it doesn't go tell an opinion writer what he will write. You know. So it's, I think, quite unfortunate that, and I, we saw you guys go after Gado, you know, and stuff, which was very unfortunate. I think it is really, really bad, you know, when we start criminalizing opinion, or when we say things we don't like uh, hearing uh, should be cut down on, or we should All right. put pressure on people to I am. I, I just said, as we looked at the headlines, no as okay. we looked at the opinion polls, yeah. this is so good. Because for me it was sad. Then that probably means was the message was really delivered. That, 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 that opinion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sabina, maybe that means the message was really delivered because it did help. And there's one know. about, uh, about uh, um, Tom Wolf. I don't think he's uh, going to sue anyone. This is no. many. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's. I've got enough cases in court already. <laughs> It's quite the, uh, I'm not too sure if you're happy with it, the representation of yourself. So who is leading in the race to the rescue? And then there's opinion polls and, you know, there's a Kenyan there with, uh, you know, bold written hunger. This is what we can expect, yes, of course. Yes, and it was brought up by our results today, as yes. uh, Macharia said, that across the uh, partisan divide between Jubilee and, and, and NASA supporters, the problems of the most serious facing the country were exactly the same within the margin of error. Hunks. So this cartoon, uh, maybe he had a sneak preview of our data, uh, <laughs> Munene, before coming up with it, but I think it's, uh, it's, it's sadly uh, representative and we hope that uh, in a, some years' time, not too long, we won't have to have ordinary Kenyans portrayed in such a downtrodden way. Well,